and welcome to Wolfie's DLC Analysis. Today, we're going over the Mario Kart 8 DLC that just came out. And we're going to be talking about the characters, the carts, and the courses. And as just so you know, there are three characters that came out with this pa first pack. Um, four carts and eight courses. And we're going to start with the characters. So we're going to start with Tanuki Mario. Tanuki Mario, originally I thought this was just going to be Mario with a tail. There's a, actually a lot of references hidden in him. In fact, he can turn to stone as part of his taunts. Uh, he does his kind of like tail flutter thing as one of his taunts when uh, doing tricks. And all of the paint jobs for the custom carts are very Tanukified. It's really cool. The exhaust pipes have the striping similar to him on his tail that are, you know, Tanuki tails it looks like. And it's kind of cool to see. And they actually took a step above and beyond him being just Mario with a tail. On top of that, he has sort of a custom skeleton to him that would have ha taken a little bit of work to actually just alter Mario's to do so. And so it's actually really cool how much it went into Tanuki Mario. Another thing is he kind of has a little bit more of a wild, I guess, with like Wild West type attitude. Uh, he says yeehaw a lot, um, Tanuki. Uh, his audio clips are all just they're different than Mario's, which is really cool because when you get into the Metal Mario and Pink Gold Peach, you know, it's like, okay, these are really clone characters. And these are not. In fact, it takes a little bit of work to actually get these Tanuki characters to work properly. And as you can see from this B-roll, it looks pretty nice on either a bike or a cart. And when on a cart, if you slow it down, you can actually see that the tail actually shrinks back into the character upon entering the cart. A little bit of work to get that one to work, but it's really kind of cool. Next, we're going to talk about Cat Peach. Cat Peach is adorable. Why do I say adorable? Well, because she acts very much like her 3D world cat counterpart. In that everything she does kind of would be what a cat would do. She poses like a cat. She even poses in several poses from 3D world. And she just kind of taunts you, and she's one of the only characters that when they fall off the edge actually has an audio trick. She actually says whoops when she falls off the edge. And it's just, it's a cute character. It's hard to explain. Along with that whole tail thing that I mentioned about Tanuki Mario, she would have actually taken a bit of technical work. She is slimmer than Tanuki Mario, and both her and Tanuki Mario are midweights. Mario being heavier, he is heavier, but Peach is not much lighter than Tanuki Mario. Now, let's talk about the character everyone wants to hear about, Link. Link is actually a heavyweight driver in this game, which is pretty cool. He's at right above midweight, and so being heavyweight, mainly because of his chainmail, he can pretty much knock a lot of the characters off the road. He uses his Master Sword in most of his tricks, but occasionally he will pull out all three pieces of the Triforce. Yeah, Link just happens to carry that in his pocket, which is kind of cool. Um, his sound effects are all Legend of Zelda sound effects, and surprisingly, not annoying. As I originally thought, they might get annoying and repetitive, but they're not, uh, which is a really good thing. His model is amazing. Like... It's not quite Skyward Swords Link, it's very much the style of Skyward Swords, but he's shorter to fit into the Mario Kart universe a little bit better. And then all the details on it, there's just so many details. How his hat flows, everything. You would think he'd be a completely unique model, but he's actually based off of one of the least popular characters in the entire Mario, franchise, Mario Kart franchise, Waluigi. That's right, Link actually shares the skeleton of Waluigi. You can see this specifically when Link's sitting in carts and his knees are kind of protruding upward. It's a very similar pose to that of Waluigi when he's sitting in carts. But unlike Waluigi, Link's proportions look a little bit nicer. Sorry, Waluigi. You just don't have anything on those chiseled features. Transitioning in from characters to carts, we're going to start with the Tanuki cart. I know, I would think they would have come up with something like the Tanuki truck, Tanuki mobile, the Jeep Nuki, something like that. It is a very Jeep shaped truck and it looks really good when you add the monster truck wheels on it as you see in this footage. It is a heavier type of vehicle, in fact it's not 
it kind of can bump your midway characters up in weight. So it's a heavier and faster vehicle. It is actually quite impressively fast. Um, attaching the monster truck wheels will give it incredible traction, but not exactly the best handling in the world. So it's kind of a trade-off there, but it looks good, especially in slow motion, where you can really see all of its details, because this game is really full of details. Next, we're transitioning into a classic kart, returning for another round of Mario Kart. This is, I think, the third or maybe even fourth time this one has appeared. This kart first appeared in Mario Kart DS as Mario's standard kart. It's the same one that you can see on the front cover of the DS game. It is Mario's B-Dasher. Bum, bum, bum. Now the B-Dasher is a heavy kart. Yes, this one is a heavy kart and a high speed kart. Meaning this thing's speed stat is ridiculous and attach whatever wheels you attach to it will make sure that it actually has an okay handling or okay traction but never both at the same time and a very low acceleration. But the B Dasher is the king of straight courses. If you put this thing on any straight course with any character, you're gonna take off flying. And it is one of my favorites from the Mario Kart series. And putting it in HD and giving it a really nice update has made it look outstanding, as you can see here from the footage. Up next, we have the legendary Blue Falcon. This is Captain Falcon's vehicle from the F-Zero series. In fact, if you play Smash Bros, it's the same one that you get hit in the face with if Captain Falcon Smash Bros lands. The Blue Falcon is interesting because it is the only card that actually carries blue flames in its first stage of boost. In fact, actually, it's the only one that does blue flames at all. It puts the wheels underneath the vehicle, so it's with smaller wheels, it's actually harder to see. And it looks kind of like it's hovering. Now, this is an illusion. It does have wheels. In fact, with larger wheels, you can see them quite obviously. But the Blue Falcon looks nice regardless. When flying around, <laughs> yeah, flying around in this, you will feel like you're driving the real Blue Falcon. Now, the Blue Falcon is a speedster, much like the B-Dasher. In fact, it has very similar stats to the B-Dasher in regards to speed. But it is a little bit lighter, interestingly enough, which makes it a very nice handling and speed type machine. And I actually really do like the Blue Falcon to race online. Its details and its references make it perfect. Finally, we have the Master Cycle. Now, I was stoked when I first saw the concept art for this vehicle. I was like, oh my god, it looks so amazing. And I was impressed that they did not let me down. Now, the Master Cycle is a really impressive vehicle. Again, high speed stat, but has high handling as well, which makes it perfect for any character to just hop on and destroy with. Adding Link to it, though, will reduce its handling capabilities as he is a heavyweight, and heavyweights do have that stat kind of reduced, but they increase their speed stat because of it. It's still one of the best motorcycles in the game, and it looks amazing with three, yes, three Highland Shields welded to the body of a mechanical horse. It is the only piece of this DLC that actually has three parts to it, being the body, wheels, and glider, which all have little tiny nods to Zelda in their various ways, like the fact that the wheels kind of have the spinner pattern on them on the inside of the rims along with the Triforce. The hang glider looks kind of stitched but has the classic Legend of Zelda logo along with a Triforce at the top. There's just so many references in here. All right, now to end up this whole DLC thing, we're gonna be talking about the courses. Wario's Gold Mine is the first course we're gonna be talking about because, well, it's Wario's Gold Mine, you know, from the Wii. Yeah, that thing. Now, Wario's Goldmine was actually one of my least favorite courses in the entire Wii. Why? Because I was using tilt controls, and tilt controls do not make this course easy at all. Though, I love the redone version of it. All of the details look great. 
the zero gravity portion is so much nicer to get through than the non-zero gravity portion of the Wii version. I can actually appreciate Wario's Goldmine for what it is now that I'm not using tilt controls. And it is truly one of the better remakes. And what's funny about this one is this one didn't need much work at all to be transitioned into this game. So it looks great, it plays great, it feels like the classic without the aggravation of tilt controls. Next we're talking about Yoshi's Circuit. Oh man did I love this one back in the Double Dash days. Again this one showed up on the Wii. It wasn't as good and it didn't feel right on the Wii, but it definitely felt right back in Double Dash. This one feels just like the Double Dash one. No, no real difference between this and the Double Dash one. It really feels right, which is great because I like when my things feel right. And just listening to that iconic music and racing through there, I'm like, okay, I'm, I miss you GameCube, even though you're behind me and not plugged in, but I still miss my GameCube. Next, we are going to talk about the SNES Rainbow Road. This one also has appeared three times, much like Yoshi's Circuit. And I can't really say this is my favorite Rainbow Road. It's actually the most plain out of every Rainbow Road, but people really, really wanted this one. Now, this is the third Rainbow Road added to this game, which I'm okay with because a Rainbow Road Cup doesn't sound bad to me at all. In fact, having a full four wouldn't be bad. But it's just, this one's kind of a more bland, where all they have is a bunch of rainbow swamps, no guardrails, um, yeah, it, it's uh, just really flat, and in all honesty, I'm kind of glad that they did what they did with the N64 Rainbow Road, instead of doing what they did with the SNES Rainbow Road, because that one just feels cut and paste. Alright, now we're going to talk about the two unique tracks within here. The unique being they're not based off of any existing games and are not returning ones. We're going to start with Dragon Dripway. Lakitu's land of coming forth of I don't know. But essentially this is a Lakitu course even though it's a dragon. You can see Lakitu everywhere in Kung Fu poses and you can go through this hall that's just like all of the Lakitu in various different poses. It's actually really cool to drive through and this is a very drift heavy course. I love all of it. The music's great. The course itself is great. This is one of those ones that if you look back at the course and try to think what you are going through, you will get confused because you really do travel along this dragon and it is twists and turns and it would be one heck of a roller coaster if it were a real roller coaster. So that's Dragon Driftway. It's really cool. I like it. It's nice and themed and surprisingly Lakitu. Now we're going to talk about Ice Ice Outpost. Now Ice Ice Outpost is a twin force that you can switch between the two forces at any time. Now this is cool and all because it allows you to kind of find the fastest way by cutting on the inside of each one and they intertwine. But then on top of that there are ice pieces on the outsides of the course that you can hop on to be shortcuts. And the whole thing is kind of dynamic. There's the icebergs behind you and everything actually are crumbling occasionally and falling, which is really, really detailed. Like, I didn't notice all these details the first time. And it is a Toad-inspired course, of all things. As you can see by... Well, actually, you can't really see because I'm racing as Toad. Yeah! That little guy is getting his own game. Well, Captain Toad is. So, Ice Ice Outpost is like kind of... I almost wanted them to switch the dragons a little bit because then it would be like a twin dragon. That'd be cool too. But that is kind of how it is. It's two roads that are constantly intersecting and merging back together and you can keep switching. It's a fun little course that may have some serious strategic value later on. Now we're going to talk about Excite Bike. Woo! Well, this one is actually one of the biggest letdowns on this entire um piece of DLC. I thought, okay, Excite Bike, a bunch of ramps, you know, this would be fun. Problem is, it's actually just a straight oval, and the ramps do are placed randomly, but there's only a set number of ramps per round, and they do not alter that variable at all. You will always have ramp A, 
ramp B, ramp C, ramp D, and this many mud pits, and so it doesn't change that much at all, and that's kind of lame, especially because the fact that it's really just straight, 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 and the minimal amount of turns and tricks needed is kind of uneventful, and so it's a really forgettable course that if you've got a high speed stat you can blaze through, not even joking, without any competition at all. You know what I like? F-Zero. F-Zero is an awesome racing game that's not Mario Kart that Nintendo makes. And you know what's really great? When they take the cor one of the most iconic courses from F-Zero and make it a Mario Kart track. Mute City is pretty famous when it comes to F-Zero tracks. And they took that, put Mario in it, and then made sure that the cards travel much like F-Zero cards. The guardrails on the side have a shock effect, similar to that of F-Zero. Um, the healing stations give you coins, so that you can charge up your coins as you pass through them. Uh, there are boost pads everywhere to keep the speed up, and it's just, it's really fast. I love it. Uh, there's a sign that says, show me your moves, and it's Captain Falcon. So it's like, oh, okay, that was a great Easter egg there. The background looks perfect. I mean, you go upside down, you're going sideways, you're on walls. It is Mute City. You've got the music playing. When you win the race, you actually hear sort of a unique Mute City, not Mute City, uh, F-Zero Victory theme. And it's like, oh, that's really cool. A lot of details went into this. And if you love F-Zero, you're gonna love Mute City. It's a great one. I really do love it. And finally, we're gonna talk about the Hyrule Circuit. Now this one is literally the most detail-oriented circuit out of any of them. You go into this point where there's the Master Sword, on top of the stained glass is each of the medallions that you get in Ocarina of Time. There's a small puzzle in which when you solve it, the Master Sword lights up and you can jump and actually spin boost off the Master Sword. Um, you start out in Hyrule Field with a very curvy Hyrule Field path. Uh, all of the enemies on the track is Zelda are Zelda enemies. Coins have been replaced with rupees. When you get a mystery box, it actually makes the Zelda you know, what's in the chest type thing, but then that, um, oh, it's just, it's incredible how many details. In fact, they actually even, in part of the theme song, include the Hyrule Field theme, which, again, it's all really cool. There's a lot of details that have been thrown into this. Hyrule Castle looks amazing. Uh, at one, it's funny, you actually go through the back of Hyrule Castle, which you've never done in a Zelda game. And then you come out in Castle Town. The guards have the Legend of Zelda symbol on them. Uh, the archway is like a stone archway that looks very similar to Skyward Swords. So many details. It's so hard to actually remember all of the amazing details that are in this course. And it's got like amazing music. So you may be wondering how you would play online with those who don't have the DLC. Well, good news is Nintendo has already figured out that out for you. So you can use your DLC freely. When you go online, there's an option to turn the DLC tracks on or off. By doing this, you can play with people who don't have the DLC tracks, or you can play with people who do. This will allow you to actually play the DLC tracks online, which I've noticed have appear a little bit more often. Uh, probably to kind of get them out of people's uh, systems, you know, to really push it out there. Um, if you have a DLC character, other people can see them if they don't have it, kind of like advertisement, which is awesome, I think, along with your carts. It all looks really, really good. There was a compatibility update to do that. But the tracks themselves cannot be played unless you own the DLC, which is a really good way to kind of be like, hey, get it. You need to get this DLC. What do I think of it in the end? I actually think this is amazing. This DLC is just truly amazing. There's no other word for it. It is truly some of the best DLC I've ever played. Best 
racing DLC I have ever played, and it fits perfectly. It's almost like it was part of the game. But, um, and it's obvious that they made it afterward because there were things that weren't as pushed, like uh, zero gravity and aerial and water section. Water sections don't even appear in this DLC. But there's things that weren't pushed, but it feels like this is part of the game. If you hit it random, it feels right. And so I would have to say that this DLC is amazing and you should get it. It is well worth the money. Getting it in the pack is even better. So just, I, I love it. Those are just my thoughts on it. I think it's actually really well balanced. Uh, nothing feels out of place at all. The art style, everything is right. And so you can click these two little videos that are playing over on the sides. And this will take you to a nice let's play of both cups so you can actually see the cups in action and you can click the pie go back to our channel you can tell us how we did in the comment section and you can subscribe to us i thank you guys again wolfie